I was recently playing uh, a game of story with my grandsons, and they had a great time, but uh, it took about four and a half go-throughs of the deck to complete the game, and they got kind of bored with that because it was the same cards over and over again. Along, the, uh, along around the third shuffle through the cards, they started uh, brainstorming ideas for more interesting cards that could be added to the deck to both uh, extend how long a shuffle lasts and to, you know, make things a little bit more interesting. After we shut down the game, I said, you know, that's not a bad idea. So I began wondering if I could do that. So here's what I came up with. I scanned the back of a real card and printed it out. And then on the reverse side, printed out a, uh, some new cards. And here's an example. One of the questions they asked is, why are there no sixes and no nine cards? And the answer is that they're too often confused. Is it a six or a nine? So I created the topsy-turvy card. It's either a six or a nine when you draw it, and you get to use whichever is the most helpful to you. Next, I came up with the jump card. If someone picks this, no matter where they are, they can jump to the next closest slide and slide. Some of my younger grandsons don't really like the sorry cards because they make them feel like they're being picked on by their older brothers. So I created the game sorry card. In this one, when you draw it, it's like the game is sending you back to start, not somebody that you, uh, not, not a friend or a brother. That seemed to go over a lot better. In the same vein, I created the help a friend card. If someone draws this, they give it to anyone else on the board that they want, and they can either use it to get a man out or move a man forward 15 squares. This is really a you lose a turn card, but it's a little bit more friendly, and I found it goes over a lot better. The next card is a double-edged card. It's called the big jump card. What you do is, if you have a man in this position and you get that card, you jump him to the exact same square, but on the opposite side of the board. Now, this would seem to be a great thing because you get to cover half the board at once. What's different, though, is let's say your man is over here and you draw this card. It means you jump all the way over here and you have to start all the way around the board again. So it can help you or it can hurt you. Another card they like is the free pass card. If they draw one of these, they get to move a man, no matter where he is, to home. This is a very powerful card, so I only added two of these to the deck. And finally, their favorite card of all is the secret agent card. If you draw this card, you draw two more cards, play one, and keep the other hidden away, and you can play it any time you want. It's kind of a sneaky card. They have a lot of fun with this one. When trying out this new deck, we've uh, realized an additional benefit in that it is thick enough. I added 24 cards. It's uh, thick enough that uh, typically you only need to go through the deck twice so that you don't have three and four repetitions of the same deck. So it's a lot more interesting. The kids like uh, finding cards that they hadn't seen before and it gave me the idea of creating an additional set of extra cards and I'd swap these out and mix them up so that every time they sat down to play they wouldn't know which cards would be coming up in, uh, in the game. And this maintained their interest uh, much better. There are several different ways you can make the cards. These I made by scanning the backs, printing them out on glossy paper, printing uh, the, uh, the face sides uh, on another piece of glossy paper and gluing them together. It's a little tedious. Another way you could try is to get double-faced paper and print them both at the same time. That creates problems depending on how accurate your printer is for indexing the two sides at the same place. If I had to do this over again, what I would do is go to a uh, thrift store and just buy an extra sorry game and then use labels 
uh, sticky back labels to print these out and just stick them on to the cards. So, I hope this gives you some uh, interesting ideas of how you can adapt your own story game and make it more interesting for your children. And as always, thank you very much for watching.